Hello, everyone, and welcome back. We have the infamous Jenny here, and Hello. we are going to show kind of how we're able to do things from a more efficient standpoint. So this is the shoot that we're working on, number 14. You can see deep carries to patients in pain. Um, and at this point, what's happened is we've already got the patient numb, and Jenny's about to test the tooth, and she'll kind of be talking through what she's doing at this point. At this time, I've got my cotton pellet on the cotton forceps, and I'm just going to spray it, shake off the excess, and gently put it on the patient's tooth to start off with and make sure that they're not feeling anything. And if nothing, I'll hold it on there for a little bit longer. And at this time, it looks like the patient was good to go. So getting ready to hand the rubber dam to Dr. Suter. We'll get going. Yeah. So I will have a camera, a video of what you'll see through the actual microscope kind of pop up here in just one second. But right now, this is the, we're putting the bite block in, we're getting the rubber dam on. Depending on the availability, sometimes I will do it. Sometimes Jenny will do it just depending, or the other assistants will do it just depending on uh, how busy we are, if we have another consult or what else is going on. So Dr. Cedar currently is popping over the edges of the rubber dam clamp and I'm getting anything else going that I need. I can see I'm moving over my rotaries and my file forceps with an eight file on it. I also opened up my irrigation and bent the tip and prepped my fingering. So when I take the photos, I'm pretty much alone in the scope for that one because all the um, controls are on my side of the computer. And at this point, we're gonna go ahead and get started with the case. At this point on my end, it's just suction and keeping his mirror clean. Yep. And so that was the patient's hand. Don't worry, I am wearing gloves. <laughs> 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 but what you'll see is Jenny does a really nice job. And one of the things, the reasons we love having that side scope for our assistants is they can see exactly where my mirror is. And so you'll see she does a really nice job rinsing off any water that might be going on here. Um, I forgot to turn the water on. That's what I'm doing right now. <laughs> and now we'll get going. <laughs> I don't have any control over the water. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> so at this point, you can see her suction's pretty much right next to the tooth, just to the distal. And she's keeping my mirror nice and dry. This way, we don't have to go back and keep wiping the mirror. Um, the mirror magic stuff that I've talked about before on the channel makes a huge difference as well for being able to make sure that that it creates that nice hydrophobic surface and keeps all that nastiness off of there. So I think at this point I switched, did I need a new, I don't think I remember if I needed a new burr on this one or not, but we do keep the burrs. If you look on Jenny's side, it's on her right hand side over the corner. We do have extra burrs that we're able to grab just in case. Um, I think we were turning up the music because we liked the song at that point. That was a pretty good song. <laughs> it's important to have good tunes in the room. Yeah, I did the original, this was uh, the, stuff that you see in the microscope is recorded with one of the cameras attached to the scope. And then this is just my iPhone for the backside. Um, I had to kill all that audio because we had music going and I'm not, I don't need to pay for <laughs> the royalties or whatever that is. Um, so you saw we knocked that little piece of composite out of there. And now at this point, we're going to be cleaning out the carries, which exposes the pulp here. Um, as you can see, this is the time where the most important thing for the assistant is just to keep that mirror nice and dry. From an efficiency standpoint, if I have to keep wiping the mirror off, that's where you really do lose a lot of that speed. And the other thing you'll notice is I'm not spending that much time switching out burrs, and that's because I have the three high speeds. So in this case, I can look at it beforehand, know that I'm going to need the flat disc to flatten off the tooth. I'm going to need the carbide to get rid of the caries, and then I'll use that workhorse burr like, burr like we normally do to get down inside and actually do the preparation for the excess, which is what we're going to be doing right now. So as you can see, Jenny's not doing much as far as the back counter. This is kind of a boring part for the uh, right-hand mm -hmm. side of the screen. <laughs> um, but on the inside, she's doing a huge difference. And then all always rinsing after uh, to make sure we have a nice clean surface going inside there. What'd you grab there? I grabbed you a burr. Oh, okay. So it was a burr. This yeah. So a, this I, is, I, I did, I did need a new burr. <laughs> they don't know it as that. They know it as the workhorse. Oh, yeah. Workhorse. Yeah. Okay, so the, the, this is an inside tip. If you make it this far into the video, that burr is named for Dave Przykowski, a fantastic endodontist out of Florida, who was one of the first ones to find it uh, as far as the use of this thing. And there's a bunch of us who just call it that because it's a very interesting <laughs> name. So he's, he's a great guy. So shout out to Dave. Um, at this point here, I think we are finally done with the access. So she is putting everything down. And you can talk about what you're grabbing here. Right. And as you see, I've handed the file to the doctor. And now my hands really have a couple free seconds. So I'm automatically turning on the rotaries, which is what he's going to need next. That way, when I hand it to him, it's on and ready to go. And, and so going in. Swapped it out. Yeah. And now I'm going to prep to rinse the area because every time I have to reuse one, we do rinse. Yeah. And I know that there's some people who don't. I like to, because we... Um, 
keep things nice and small. I want to use every opportunity possible to get irrigation solution inside the tooth. And so I like to rinse after every, every rotary. Um, we also keep things nice and small. So I don't want to have any debris remaining inside the canal that could bind the tooth and cause an instrument separation. So I'm going to go ahead and rinse this out right now. No block out on this one for a we did not. distal caries. I'm proud of you. Right, <laughs> um, right here is oh. we're trying to find um, MB2. I was able to get into it a little bit with the 8C, um, trying to grab it with the 20. Sometimes you're lucky and it works, but as you can see, it's just not working here. So um, we're going to go ahead and rinse that out. And then we will be going back in and chasing after that MB2 here in just a second. So um, any tips for suctioning when this part? At this point, I would just be as close as possible. Like Dr. said earlier, there are some cases where I prefer to use blackout. <laughs> It's your friend. Don't be afraid of it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Other than that, just keep it as close as, as possible for you. Yeah. Um, keeping things nice and dry there. You can see he kind of, this patient kind of had like a double distal thing. They joined right away, but kind of a cool canal system as you, if you look on the distal aspect there where the distal buckle is, but you can see the little dot. Um, and this is, I'm not editing my side like I normally would. So it's not, this is actually what the, the zooming in and out is exactly what I'm seeing here. So sorry if it's a little jittery compared to the normally stabilized one. But what I'm doing now is taking that workhorse burr and going right over where that MB2 is to open it up a little bit so I can have more of a straight line access. MB2s tend to take almost like an S curve when they first come in like that. And if you can straighten that out, you can get a more of a straight shot down inside there. So. And here I am again, grabbing that eight file and you can, auto you saw me automatically pick up the rotary because 100% that's what he's going to need next. Yeah. Although this time it might be the 17 I picked up. I think it I'm is the 17. Sure. Oh, oh, 20. No, there we are. 20. This, this, you can tell we're doing this one take. <laughs> 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 so trying to open that up with the 20 here. And you can see that she's now grabbing the 20. We tend to talk about the weather, sports, whatever book she's reading, recent, um, movies. recent movies, things like that when working. But I am always calling out if we switch things up from the ordinary. So at this point, I knew I was going to need the 17 after because that 20 didn't drop down to even close to what my estimated working length was. So this is where she knew to have the 17 ready. Um, and I, I wish we had a shot of her hand because she has like octopus hands and is able to hold like 20 things in her left hand all at once. Um, but going down now with the 17 and you'll see it drop right there. So now I know that we're looking good. This ended up being a type two system. So you can sometimes right where those two come together kind of at the Y, it can be a little bit tough to get past that. And so using smaller files is kind of a trick that I do to go around that. One other trick, I haven't talked about this before, but if the, with Martinic files, if they start start to bend on you, these really bendy ones, you can actually put them down a straight canal that heats them up and actually gets them to be stiff again. And sometimes it's nice to just quick pop into the palatal right. canal, stiffen it up. Actually, you never knew I did that, did you? <laughs> I don't right, know if I told yeah. you that. <laughs> so we're all learning together, you guys. This is so much fun. Um, <laughs> And then rinse in here. So at this point, you can see the tray hasn't had that much action. We're, we're pretty stable as far as what we're mm -hmm. doing. Um, but by now, she's putting the suction down, which means we are ready to get length. And so you'll see here, I was actually interested when I was putting this video together, she really doesn't have to do much as far as the length. I'm surprised by how little you're actually doing during the length period. <laughs> you're, you're I on promise the I do work you're, hard. You, you do, but you're on the computer most of the time. Is, and that's, that's great. That's why we use TDO. So she's able to pretty much do everything. I was trying to look like, wait, when do you pass me the the forceps? And I realized that since you're left-handed, you can do Correct. it with your right hand. If you're right-handed, if you're, it's really good mm -hmm. to have an assistant with the opposite handedness of you is one thing mm -hmm. I will say. Um, it has been very fun working with left-handed assistants. Um, I do have some right-handed ones, but the left-handed one, it, it, it does make it a lot easier. It really does. 100%. <laughs> uh, so I'm always, I don't even put the, the, locking forceps down that like they just stay in my hand until we're completely yeah. done because even though i'm trying to do my note i can see out of the corner of my left eye that he's going to be done and ready and it's right there and right now are you doing the note or are you doing the length i'm doing both both okay yeah mm -hmm. so if you haven't seen tdo before there's different tabs that you can go through and so under the treatment tab is where the length is and then what do you do notes uh yeah treatment okay. tab and then notes and yep. then also if the, we've completed the case yeah. And then um, I'm also posting fees at the same time. Yeah. So this is one way that you can be super efficient as far as getting the patient out of there quickly um, is by having the assistant be able to do a lot of this where, you know, I'm not, I'm 
I don't need her help right now. Just all I need is here to pass me the little locking forceps and I'm able to do, right. do the rest of it by myself. So um, that is pretty much what it looks like for the working length. Everything looks great there. And you can see we're starting. We got our fourth and final one looking good <laughs> for the MB2. So you can see some action over on Jenny's side. Um, I was happy with where we got with the 2006. So we're just going to finish this to the 1704. I, I got within about two millimeters of working length with the 2006. So not really any point to take it all the way to the working length. Take the 17 down just to make sure we have a nice glide path for the uh, squirt technique. And you'll see that here in a minute. So at this point, we're doing what we call the final rinse, which is the big rinse to make sure we get all the debris out before we obturate the case. Um, you've grabbed the end of activator? I've grabbed the end of activator yep. and I've grabbed the beta and turned it on. Perfect. Yeah. You'll also see a lot of the times I don't put my suction down very much um because it just it right there i did it yes there. <laughs> <laughs> um it actually just saves me time to hold it in my hands yeah and this is more with uh i think i think that's more with like single canals yeah. because you don't need to it's so quick to do just a single canal compared to a four canal tooth um so doing that final rinse getting that debris out of there um when you do paper points right now. i do paper points when you're using the microsection okay so i've set this down go. i'm going to take my tip off and then prep paper points. I always move them forward for me. They are, when we first set up on the corner of my napkin, pretty far up just because I don't want to move them and or hit them in the trash. Yeah. <laughs> so I usually pull them forward. That's me grabbing the 20K file, which is what he uses after he places sealer. So anything and everything I can do to prep, even when I just have a free second, uh, most of the things are super, super fast. So utilizing the time is important. Yeah, you can see that double distal there, pretty cool. Um, they do join right up, so it, it doesn't look that cool on the final x-ray, but I guess I could technically say there was five canals, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you also see me throwing away the paper points. Um, that helps with the cleanup at the end. And then I did grab the photo mirror a couple paper points back because I'm counting and I know he's gonna say that's it and then need a picture. Yeah. So that's how long it takes to take pictures. The nice part is when you have it set up properly, you literally, I press the space bar and it goes into the software and it's ready to go right away. So it's a, it's a very nice system to get that in. And now we're doing the squirt technique. So gonna take a little bit of that AH plus sealer down each canal using the, um, paper point and then you did grab a 20k file right there and mm -hmm. so this just makes sure that we have a nice stable glide path all the way down if there's anything blocking the flow of the gutta percha it's going to stop right there so i found that especially when i sh shrunk my sizes down to the 1704 it's nice to take that 20k uh, file just down to your working length and make sure there's nothing in the way um, make sure you have a nice path for the gutta percha to go all the way down to the bottom what are you doing here? On this, I'm just cleaning up my tray more. I've removed the sponge from my endo ring and I still have the bait in my hand to be prepped and ready for you. And I've also taken the needles off of the syringe and just mm -hmm. kind of prepped what I need next while I'm waiting. It's just basically the plugger, finishing any part of my note that I have not finished. This part is usually where I'm posting the actual root canal itself and previous part, I was just posting like my console and all the testing. But now that I know for sure I have we're completing the root canal. I posted yeah. the root canal and I probably already created the claim. Yeah. And this is the benefit of having all my, my whole team's cross trained for this very reason, because if they're used to doing this at the front desk, they're going to be used to doing it when they're chair side as well. And it just saves time so that the patient has, you know, when they're gone, everything's already been submitted. They don't have to worry about, you know, wait, making sure someone submitted the claim or we don't really have to do an extensive check at the end of the day. We right. still do, but right. usually there's nothing to worry about because it's all been done chair side. Also, the assistant chair side posting the fees is really helpful to the front desk because the front oh, yeah, desk is yeah. the one collecting the payment. And if you have no fees posted, it's automatically going to say you have a credit. Do you want to refund the patient? Yeah. So having those fees posted is super helpful to them. Also, then it also helps the front desk know what, what you completed. When did you grab the cotton pellet? I grabbed the cotton pellet probably after I gave you the 20K file. Okay. Go back in the video and <laughs> shout out in the comments when she actually grabbed the cotton pellet because I don't know either. Uh, but we're at this point, we're cleaning off the sealer inside there using a little bit of um, alcohol and then that cotton pellet just to scrub it, rinse it all off. This dentist prefers to do the restorative herself. She's fantastically talented. So I am not concerned about that whatsoever. So I will be done very soon after this. We don't have that much time left. Um, I am going to take the pack mac down with these small shapes. I do like to do it. Um, and you just what, clean yeah. And this pack rack, he that you know, this takes a little bit of longer, so I have quite a bit of time to clean up my tray. And when I say quite a bit, it's usually like 20 seconds. Oh, you can so, measure it. <laughs> so I'm, um, cleaning up little things, but then also prepping to take an x ray for the patient because as soon as he's done with his pack mech, his part is done, take an x ray, and then basically my part is done. 
Yeah, so you've got the software ready to take the x-ray. Mm -hmm. You got the lead vest on the patient. Mm -hmm. I have um, my sponge prepped and ready. Mm -hmm. And then also a, co a cotton pellet ready to smooth off the cavity after I place it. And I think that's also the glick. Oh, no, wait, the glick's still in the cassette. We can zoom in Because I pull the, <laughs> the cavity down to have everything prepped. Okay, there you go. Like I said, one take. This is how we do this. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe one day we'll actually be a Paulist channel, but today is not Maybe. that day. Yeah, she's also standing on a box, in case you're wondering. Right. Um, <laughs> super tall. We, we, we started to do this, and she was, like, down. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm actually really short. <laughs> yeah, it actually so blurred you out. It, it blurred me away because I can't even see me. So at this point, we've taken the photo. Everything looks beautiful. Um, I am going to come back in here, I believe, and smooth off a couple sharp spots because with that flat angle, I don't want to leave any right um, angles that are going to be really sharp to his tongue. So because I'm not doing the restorative here, it's nice to just take that barrel burr, buzz it around the outside, buzz it along the chamber, just so that everything's smoothed off and patients aren't complaining of sharp spots. You can ask me why we started doing this because <laughs> I was tired of getting those phone calls. So that's a that's a pro tip there. And just a big ramp. Yeah. I think he's going to, that's it. He's going right. to back out. I'm going to take so the action. I'm out of and here. That's everything. Yeah. So that's it for the, my side. And then you'll kind of see you do a little bit more work here. Mm -hmm. um, suction, rubber dams. Taking um, out the bite block. Usually they, they always need suction. And then I'm grabbing the x-ray sensor. Yeah. Taking the x-ray. Usually pops right up on my software. Mm -hmm. And we do use uh, the Cocoon. It's like a Nomad, but a different brand. Um, I love it. It's really nice. I think it's lighter than the Nomad as it well. It is. It is lighter. Um, it, it does talk to you more than the Yeah, it, does, it, has, it, it, it will to talk to you, which is kind of weird. Um, so <laughs> you can turn it off, but I don't remember how you to do it. You actually can't turn the, the one off. The one yeah. off that says getting ready to shut off. But everything else you shut yeah. off. Anyway, so that's kind of the case. Uh, as you saw, that was start to finish in, what was it, 14 minutes, 16 minutes, something like yes. that. So. It was a good case, um, and it shows you we can still do really high quality root canals, um, as you can see from the x-ray, looks really solid, and yeah, so if you have any questions for Jenny or me, please leave a comment below. Anything else? No. All right, we'll see you guys next time, so thanks again. <laughs> I like your half wave, that was good. Right. Yeah.